Um, well, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is basically a hormone imbalance um, in my body, which means that um, not everyone gets it, but a symptom of this is depression. Um, and it's a bit tricky because it's basically just a biological thing. It's not caused by anything else. It's not because there's something bad going on in my life. It's just sometimes I feel really, really low for no reason. Um, and I guess that's what makes it quite difficult because there's no actual reason for it, it's just something that happens. So it's quite difficult to explain to people. Okay, so uh, when I was 17, uh, I um, developed anorexia um, and I had that quite, uh, quite seriously until I was 18. Uh, and then that sort of developed into a, um, just a more like an anxiety disorder, uh, which I still struggle with. Um, and I think, so sort of the eating issues never totally go away, but it's a lot more managed now. Personally, I've had, uh, since coming to Cambridge, I've had issues uh, in terms of anxiety uh, and I had a, uh, a brush with depression myself. And I think being in Cambridge, you can't avoid being in contact with other people with mental health issues. Uh, you do tend to find that you end up mixing with a lot of people who had or currently have depression or anxiety. Uh, there's a lot of people like yourself, so you won't be alone at least. I think Cambridge is a nightmare from a mental health point of view. Um, it makes it so difficult to just give yourself time to deal with problems. And one of the biggest things that um, I've learned from having had counselling is that actually just accepting the problem and giving yourself time to sit back and think about it and deal with it is what you need. And Cambridge makes that so much harder because there's so much constant pressure. When you finish one supervision essay, there's another one due in 24 hours time. Or you've got another service on a Sunday or another service on a Thursday. And so it makes it very, very difficult to just give yourself the time to deal with it. It is different, like Cambridge is different to everywhere else. And that, whether it be like living wise, academic wise. Um, so I think because of the intensity, it doesn't, it doesn't help. I've used both the college counselling and the university counselling service um, and they're both really good. Um, the university counselling service, um, it's quite short term I'd say, um, they sort of establish how long you need to be seeing someone there for um, and then you sort of, if they see that you're improving they say like you can continue with the counselling service at your college or you can just um, decide not to have counselling anymore, which I'd say. Um, it's good that you get to see them, but I think maybe you should be able to see them for a longer period of time. Uh, I think in Cambridge, um, from what I know personally, when I was working for the for the peer to peer scheme, um, there is a lot of resources and places that students can go um, that is available there and open to students. Well, the only thing is that there are, um, well, like very few of them are very well known and extensively used by students, so that. A lot of students, they do not know the existence of some help or they're still having a bit of this difficulty really be forthcoming and going to use those resources. I've had an amazing experience with the UCS. Um, it was the UCS that the doctor initially referred me to and they saw me within 10 days of my referral and then regularly um, every one or two weeks on my terms um, for the next, at least for the next six months. Um, and the counsellor I had was amazing. He made me able to deal with the patches where I was feeling sad and feeling low and um, taught me how to still manage my workload and manage the pressure whilst allowing myself to deal with the problems of being sort of slightly emotionally unstable. My key advice would be when you're dealing with a mental health issue, you probably will come across some people who either brush it off or don't understand it. Uh, you can come across, say, your tutors or your DOS may not be the most understanding people in the world about it. But that doesn't mean there aren't people out there that can help with it. You know, there are people either in the tutorial system, other students, uh, other members of the welfare system who will help deal with it. My, uh, my philosophy after all this is 
if you're not willing to talk about it casually in general like in a conversation with someone you trust then if there is a problem how are you going to bring it up it's harder to bring up a problem than it is just to talk about something so be as honest with you can open with say a co- like someone a close friend family member like just listen to what your friend is saying that they feel because for me anorexia wasn't just food it was about feeling scared to talk to or being terrified of crowds not wanting to leave my house it was like a million other issues that actually people find less familiar and so they don't really know what to do with they don't have to deal with that because they know what it's like if someone's not eating well just tell them to eat but how do you cope with all these other side effects um and so i think it's just about not expecting people to conform to a type even if they say this is the thing that i have i never thought that i'd be saving these walls weren't built for caving blue high but here's the thing i didn't know that i had icarus rings i never thought that i'd need saving never imagined my wife black waving blue high but here's the thing too close to the sun with Icarus wings, yeah.